robots are going to be everywhere. Uh, algorithms are going to be everywhere. They're going to be driving cars for us. They're going to be fetching us things. They're going to be handling things for us in our homes. They're going to be controlling the heat and the cooling in our homes. They're going to, they're going to be ubiquitous servants. And uh, the big difference between uh, the, uh, the 20th century and the 21st century in consumer protection is that in the 20th century, the classic example of a consumer protection prob a problem would be an exploding Coke bottle or a product that doesn't do what the manufacturer said it would do. All right? In the 21st century, the uh, classic example of a consumer protection problem is going to be a robot that's spying on you and reporting back to the central office what you're doing at home. Robots and algorithms are not the issue. It's the people and the corporations behind them that are the issue. It's really not a question of rights or liabilities or duties of robots. Uh, it's really the relationships between human beings and the other human beings who are creating the algorithms and the robots that are affecting people's lives. The most important uh, rules are twofold. First of all, that when you're the end user of a, um, of a service that uh, is a robotic service or an algorithmic service, uh, they should be what I call an information fiduciary toward you. And what that means is simply this. They cannot act like a con man. They cannot induce your trust in the service they're providing and then turn around and betray you. Okay, that's the first idea. The second idea is that when you are not the end user of a product or a service, so for, uh, uh, but rather an algorithm is making decisions about your employment, about your credit scores, about your uh, life, uh, they should not be algorithmic nuisances. And all by that I mean is they should not try to foist the cost, the social costs of their use of computing power on you. Uh, so essentially we're going to be in a world in which these companies have enormous amounts of computing power, they have enormous access to databases, and they're going to have to decide what saves them the most money for doing the things they want to do. And uh, one way to cut costs is to basically adopt uh, techniques that get what they want, but that throw off a lot of other problems on other people, for example, through discrimination or through manipulation. And the whole idea is not that they shouldn't be able to do that. So there is a saying in Silicon Valley that I've heard, which is that big data is the new oil. And by that, they mean that big data is an enormous source of wealth. That is that you monetize all the data that you're getting from people as they uh, use your services or your website, or they talk to the robot or to the artificial intelligence agent. You're producing enormous amounts of data, which can then be used to monetize. But there's another thing that they don't say, which is that big data is like soil and green. Big data is people. And so the problem is that as you're monetizing all that, you're having all these effects on people. You're manipulating them, you're discriminating against them, you're invading their privacy. So when we think about big data, what we have to understand is we're really talking about a relationship between the people who collect, collate, and analyze big data and the other people who are going to be affected by it. That's really what's at stake in the world of big data. Uh, so one of the interesting things about robots that makes them different from other kinds of technology is that they have a kind of social meaning. Uh, Ryan Kahlo at the University of Washington has pointed out that one thing that's really interesting about robotics is that robots have social valence. People treat them as if they're alive and they treat them as if they have feelings and they talk to them and deal with them. Now that in itself isn't so much of a problem. It is a problem, however, if, in fact, behind the robot is what I call an information fiduciary. That is a company that's collecting data. And here the real danger is that the robot's smiley face and pleasant manner and polite bearing will be used to collect data that will be basically used against our interests. That is that the robot will be the face of something else that is betraying us. Then what we care about is not that the robot is smiley. What we care about is that the company behind it is doing things that are not in our interest and shouldn't be doing those things.